Welcome to the China Briefing. The content of the briefing includes China's real estate meltdown is battering middle class wealth. Witness against Hong Kong media mogul was mistreated, post examination finds. We all rely on the World Wide Web under the waves, but who's watching who? BYD targets Japan as gateway for global EV exports. Pessimism abounds in Hong Kong's property market even as rate outlook improves. China's real estate meltdown is battering middle class wealth. Bloomberg. The slump in China's real estate and stock markets is wiping away household wealth and forcing middle class households to reassess their money priorities. The decline in family wealth is primarily due to China's real estate meltdown which is having a pervasive effect on a society where 70% of family assets are tied up in property. As a result, some households are pulling away from investing or selling assets to free up liquidity. The decline in the housing market is also increasing the risk of unemployment or reduced incomes for about 5 million people, or 1% of the urban workforce. Witness against Hong Kong media mogul was mistreated, post-examination finds. Washington Post. Hong Kong's highest profile trial since the national security law was imposed by Beijing will begin on Monday. Computer programmer turned activist Andy Lee Yuhin will testify against Jimmy Lai, the billionaire media mogul and founder of the Apple Daily newspaper, which has been shut down. Lee has already pleaded guilty under the national security law and is expected to tie Lai to an alleged foreign conspiracy against Hong Kong and China. Li was mistreated while in Chinese custody, according to the Washington Post, raising questions about whether his testimony will be voluntary and reliable. We all rely on the World Wide Web under the waves, but who's watching who? ABC. Undersea fiber optic cables, which transmit the vast majority of global internet traffic, are under constant threat of surveillance, espionage, and even sabotage from nation states, according to a report by Reuters. The cables are vital to the functioning of the world's financial systems, transport, health, education, and social media, as well as being the central nervous system of intelligence and security agencies. It is alleged that both China and the US are attacking cables, and the cables are seen as a valuable surveillance tool by intelligence agencies. BYD targets Japan as gateway for global EV exports. Nikkei Asia. Chinese electric vehicle, EV, manufacturer BYD is focusing on the Japanese market as a test of its ability to compete in foreign markets. BYD sold 2.08 million vehicles in the first three quarters of 2021, an increase of 75% on the same period last year. The company sees Japan as a proving ground for its expansion into other markets, and plans to sell 30,000 EVs annually in Japan by 2025. BYD is also looking to expand into Southeast Asia and India, where Japanese brands are particularly strong. Pessimism abounds in Hong Kong's property market even as rate outlook improves. South China Morning Post Home prices in Hong Kong are expected to drop next year, with CGSC IMB Securities predicting a 3% fall and UBS forecasting a 10% decline. Despite positive interest rate outlook, Analysts predict property prices will slip further due to factors such as abundant housing supply and high interest rates. However, demand from mainland Chinese buyers and rising rental yields should provide some support for home prices, according to Raymond Cheng, Managing Director at CGSC IMB Securities. Fewer workers needed, closed factories, unpaid leave embody China's job woes. South China Morning Post a privately run aluminium producer in China's manufacturing hub of Guangdong has forced staff to take five months of leave on reduced salaries in response to an ongoing real estate crisis. The move has shone a light on potential unemployment problems in China, and analysts have called for more policy support to revive domestic demand and stabilize manufacturing production. The slump in the real estate market has deepened, despite Beijing's move to loosen the reins and property investment fell by 9.4% in the first 11 months of 2023 from a year earlier. The slowdown has also been felt in other sectors, including electronics and plastics producers, as well as the printing industry. 
The closures also affect nearby shops, restaurants and hotels that rely on workers for their incomes. The government should guard against risks of further deterioration of investment conditions and funding difficulties for private business in 2024. Jailed Hong Kong pro-democracy media tycoon Jimmy Lai faces his biggest trial yet. CNN Hong Kong media tycoon Jimmy Lai has turned 76 behind bars in a maximum security prison. He has been in detention since 2020 and jailed for multiple charges linked to Hong Kong's democracy protest movement and his media business, as the founder of Apple Daily, a pro-democracy, anti-Beijing newspaper that was forced to shut down in 2021. He will go on trial Monday on three counts of colluding with foreign forces, a crime under a sweeping national security law that has transformed Hong Kong, as well as a separate sedition charge, according to an indictment seen by CNN. He faces a maximum sentence of life in prison if convicted. The trial, which is expected to last at least 80 days, is the most high-profile prosecution of a Hong Kong media figure since the city was handed over from British to Chinese control in 1997. And it could set new precedents for Hong Kong's rapidly changing legal landscape. Prosecutors allege that articles published by Lai's Apple Daily newspaper violated Hong Kong's national security law by calling for overseas sanctions against the city's leaders. Lai has pleaded not guilty. Beijing imposed the national security law in the wake of the 2019 protests, arguing it has restored stability and closed loopholes that allowed foreign forces to undermine China. Critics say it has decimated Hong Kong's freedoms and transformed the city's legal landscape. Like all national security cases so far, the high-profile trial will not have a jury and will be presided over by three national security judges from a committee that is approved by Hong Kong's leader. Hong Kong's government has also blocked Lai from being represented by a British lawyer, a decision which is undergoing a separate legal challenge that has repeatedly delayed this trial's start date. Once one of the city's most outspoken figures, little has been heard from Lai since his multiple prosecutions began. The Committee to Protect Journalists called the trial a travesty of justice. It is press freedom and the rule of law that are on trial in Hong Kong, CPJ's Asia Program Coordinator Bay Lihe said. Rags to riches lies fortunes, both personal and financial, are inextricably tied to the history of modern Hong Kong. As the Great Chinese Famine gripped mainland China in 1960, Lai smuggled himself out of the southern province of Guangdong and into the then British colony of Hong Kong in the bottom of a fishing boat. He arrived in the city at the age of 12 and dirt poor. Lai said he became an odd jobs man at a textile factory, making 60 Hong Kong dollars, $7, a month and living in an apartment with 10 others in the slum neighborhood of Sham Shui Po, still one of Hong Kong's most impoverished districts. Within two decades, Lai had learned English worked his way up the factory floor to the position of salesman and decided to start his own retail line. On one trip to New York during fabric sampling season, he bought a pizza. Written on the napkin was the name Giordano. That became the name of his wildly successful, casual men's clothing chain, which made Lai his first fortune. But China's deadly 1989 crackdown on student protesters in Tiananmen Square politicized Lai and created something of a rarity in Hong Kong, a wealthy tycoon willing to openly criticize Beijing's leaders. He moved out of the clothing business and chose a new role, media baron. Lai founded Apple Daily in 1995, two years before Hong Kong was handed over to China. Modeled visually on USA Today, the paper caused a minor revolution in the city's media landscape, sparking a price war and drastically changing how rivals operated as they struggled to keep up with Lai's flashy tabloid sensibilities. While celebrity gossip and other tabloid fare were a mainstay at the paper, it also emerged as one of the fiercest critics of the local government and Beijing, winning awards for its exposés on corruption and human rights reporting. It was also openly supportive of successive waves of pro-democracy protests that swept through Hong Kong, culminating in the 2019 movement. Britain calls for Jimmy Lai's release as Hong Kong trial begins. Nikkei Asia Britain's Foreign Minister, David Cameron, has called for the release of Jimmy Lai, a leading China critic and media tycoon, ahead of his trial in Hong Kong. Lai, a British national, is facing charges of colluding with foreign forces, 
including the United States, under Hong Kong's national security law. The trial is seen as a test for the city's judicial independence and freedoms. Lai, the founder of the now-closed pro-democracy newspaper Apple Daily, has pleaded not guilty to all charges. Cameron stated that Lai's prosecution is a clear attempt to suppress his rights to freedom of expression and association. He also criticized Hong Kong's national security law as a breach of the Sino-British Joint Declaration, which guaranteed a high degree of autonomy and freedom of speech for Hong Kong under the one country, two systems formula. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I am Dr. Six, your trusted observer from the Sixth Dimension, here to bring you the latest news from around the world. Today, we have a mix of stories that highlight the challenges faced by China, the state of Hong Kong's media landscape, the vulnerabilities of undersea internet cables, the ambitions of a Chinese electric vehicle manufacturer, and the struggles in Hong Kong's property market and job market. Let's dive into the analysis, shall we? First up, we have news of China's real estate meltdown, which is taking a toll on middle-class wealth. With 70% of family assets tied up in property, the decline in the housing market is forcing households to reassess their financial priorities. This decline not only affects wealth, but also poses risks of unemployment or reduced incomes for many. It's a situation that calls for attention and possible policy support to stabilize the market and protect the livelihoods of millions. Moving on to Hong Kong, we have the trial of media mogul Jimmy Lai, who is facing charges under the national security law. The mistreatment of a witness in the case raises questions about the reliability of the testimony and the fairness of the trial. This trial is not only significant for Lai but also for the future of Hong Kong's media landscape and the protection of press freedom. The outcome could set new precedents in a legal landscape that has rapidly changed in recent years. Now, let's talk about the vulnerabilities of undersea fiber-optic cables, the backbone of our global internet connectivity. These cables, which transmit the majority of our internet traffic, are under constant threat from surveillance, espionage, and sabotage by nation-states. Both China and the US are allegedly attacking these cables, which are seen as valuable surveillance tools. It's a reminder that even in the depths of the ocean, the World Wide Web is not immune to the watchful eyes of intelligence agencies. Shifting gears, we have news from the world of electric vehicles. Chinese manufacturer BYD is eyeing the Japanese market as a gateway for its global EV exports. With impressive sales figures and plans to sell 30,000 EVs annually in Japan by 2025, BYD is testing its ability to compete in foreign markets. This move not only highlights China's ambitions in the EV sector but also poses a challenge to established Japanese brands in Southeast Asia and India. Lastly, we turn our attention to Hong Kong's property market and job market. Analysts predict a drop in home prices next year due to factors such as abundant housing supply and high interest rates. However, demand from mainland Chinese buyers and rising rental yield might provide some support. The ongoing real estate crisis has led to job woes, with some companies resorting to unpaid leave for their employees. The government needs to address these challenges and provide policy support to revive domestic demand and stabilize the manufacturing industry. So, my dear viewers, these are the stories that have caught my eye today. From China's real estate meltdown to the trial of Jimmy Lai, from the vulnerabilities of undersea cables to BYD's global EV ambitions, and from Hong Kong's property market struggles to its job woes, there's no shortage of interesting topics to discuss. Now, I invite you to share your thoughts and questions. What do you make of these stories? I'm all ears. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, 
fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.